Today on Switch to Linux, we talk about Google making a few changes to that required developer verification because guess what? A lot of people are like, that is a bad idea. Did Google listen or was this really part of their plan? I don't know. We'll talk about that a little bit today. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below. Of course, we've talked previously about the Android developer verification that they want to do, where in order to sideload anything onto any Google verified device, which is basically every device that you have not installed a custom ROM and added the Google Play services to, um, then... Um, you will not be able to install anything without the app developer giving their ID to Google. This is a fundamental problem. I'm going to talk about why it's a fundamental problem here in a minute, but they just released a article a couple days ago, and uh, this uh, is more about the Android developer notification. Early access starts now as we continue to build with your feedback. So what they are basically saying here is, you know, in the basic summary, of course, we got to do this because the uh, the scammers are over there and uh, getting involved in ways of convincing you to sideload their bank verification app, and uh, this will lead to malware. And uh, if we do not develop, if we do not verify everybody's identity, then uh, everyone's going to be a problem. And so. They go through this example here. For example, a common attack we track in Southeast Asia illustrates the threat. Clearly, a scammer calls a victim claiming to be the that their bank account is is compromised and uses fear and urgency to direct them to sideload a verification app to secure their funds. After coaching them to ignore standard security warnings, once installed, the app, actually malware, intercepts the victim's notifications when the user logs into their real banking app. Malware captures their two-factor authentication codes and then gives the scammer everything they need to drain their account. Well, I guess first and foremost, and maybe that multi-factor authentication isn't as strong as they told us it was. Remember only like two, three years ago, they're telling us, you have to do this and they can't crack it? Now they're like, do away with passwords. Use pass keys. I'm sorry, guys. The whole world's using pass keys. Do you really think it's going to stop people from doing this? No, they're going to find a way to pass crack pass keys. They're going to steal pass keys. They're going to find interesting ways to get past pass keys. I promise you it's going to happen if it's not already happening. Now, um, what they say down here is this, and this paragraph here is really the one that, that highlights uh, uh, what their view is, but it's a fundamentally, fundamentally flawed view. We have advanced safeguards and protections to deter and take down bad apps. Without verification, bad actors can spin up new harmful apps instantly. It becomes an endless game of whack-a-mole. Verification changes the math by forcing them to use a real identity to distribute malware, making attacks significantly harder and more costly to scale. That is their viewpoint. Google's like, look, we have found a magic bullet. All these developers are going to have to verify who they are, and when they have their real identity, we can track them down if it's malware. Go back to Utopia. We're in the real world, Google. You really think... This is going to stop malicious actors from doing it? No, I mean, this is neat. The Identity Theft Resource Center has a report. Now, this was from 2024, and so this is still a little bit older. I couldn't find a newer report to this, but uh, what's interesting about this report is... Uh, no, not bookmarks. Um, what's interesting about this is if you look for driver's license information, here are some trends in the 2024 data breach report and analysis. H1 trends reflect an increased value and use of stolen driver's license information. Driver's license data was stolen in 25% of data breaches based on notifications in 2024. The increased rate of driver's license data theft reflects a post-pandemic trend related to increased use of driver's licenses for identity variables verification in a wider variety of transactions. Number of data breaches where data, uh, driver's license data was stolen totaled 198 instances in pre-pandemic year 2019 compared to 634 in full year 2023 and 308 through June of 2024. 
which effectively means your driver's license theft is rapidly increasing. This, by the way, is before several states in the United States, UK, and a bunch of European countries all want to force you to identify yourself online. Well, how do they do that? Well, we got to collect your ID. Don't worry, we pinky promise. It's going, we, we got a pinky promise. It's going to be deleted as soon as it's done. Yeah, that seems to not be the case for many of these circumstances. You know, the T app was one, uh, then the T for her, of course, uh, or T for him, whatever that you know other app was, and then not to mention other things. And then apparently now, twenty five percent of data breaches include leaking of driver's license information. So Google sits here and wants to pretend that requiring people to give a driver's license is going to stop people from making malicious apps. Uh, no, they're just going to use somebody else's driver's license because it's easy for them. It's, I mean, and it's better even because, you know, we've identified it, passed the information over to the FBI, and now the FBI kicks in your door while you're eating your Fruit Loops in the morning because, you know, they think that you are the one selling the malicious app, and then it boils down to, oh, your driver's license was one of millions that were stolen in data breaches this year because guess what? The scammy people who are going to make a malicious app are going to be the people who buy the stolen driver's license information. Hello, Google. But no, they don't think about that. They just think that they have solved this problem. Now, of course, they did have some carve-outs for students and hobbyists. But now what they've added to it is this new part down here. They say that security is crucial. We've also heard from developers and power users who have a higher risk tolerance and want the ability to download unverified apps. Based on the feedback and our ongoing conversations with the community, we are building a new advanced flow that allows experienced users to accept the risk of installing software that isn't verified. So we will be designing this flow specifically to resist coercion, ensuring that users aren't tricked into bypassing these safety checks while under the pressure from a scammer. It will also include clear warnings to ensure users fully understand the risks involved, but ultimately it puts choice in their hands. We are gathering early feedback in the design. Okay, so now we want to have an advanced way that will these scammers will not be able to walk you through it. Guys, they're going to be able to walk you through it. Turning off the toggle button allowing you to install side-loaded apps is already beyond the scope of your average brain-dead Android user. Okay? I'm not using brain-dead in a derogatory term. I'm using it as a means to say a person who's not tech-savvy. A person who says, I can't find where my pictures went and hands you the phone and says, find me my pictures again. It's already too difficult for them. The scammers are able to walk them through it, and then they have malware. If you put in this complicated flow, the scammers are still going to do it. They're going to come up with something better. You have to do this because this is the advanced kind of stuff. This will absolutely prove you are who you say you are. They're going to use this to their scamming advantage. Because the real fact is this. You can't stop stupid. And you can't stop gullible. And I'm not saying everybody who falls for a scam is stupid. I am saying that you cannot bulletproof a system for total security without compromising freedom. You can't do it. It's not possible. And so we have a situation where you have to, as a user of a device, you have to accept, A, you are going to need to learn how to avoid a scam. B, you're going to need to not be so gullible. And C, if we want any form of freedom in our world, we have to accept a risk. There is no such thing. In fact, I believe was it Franklin or, or Jefferson or one of those founding fathers was quoted to say, he who sacrifices privacy or freedom, I guess, for security deserves neither. And this is true. 
this is the same thing I argued for Apple. Apple needs to have a way to unlock it to allow you to sideload apps on your Apple devices. I am not seeing it needs to be easy. Now, I would, of course, welcome anything that will return freedom back to people who A, can accept the risk, and B, know what a scammer is. But we already have a circumstance. Like, Android is already hardened against these types of attacks. We don't need to make it more complicated. But I guess if this is what we get, well, I guess this is what we get. If this is what saves F-Droid, so be it. If this is what saves other developers and people wanting privacy-focused apps, so be it. If this even saves, hey, I have a client that does like high-end in like uh, technology type stuff, like um, communication technology things, lots of government contracts, you know, high-frequency transmitters and things like that. Many of those little chips that they sell have Android apps you can download inside side load. There, why should those guys throw all their apps on the Android Play Store? Do we need more cluttered up garbage on the Android Play Store? I don't know. Uh, but the reality here is, is that it is good that they're listening. It's good they're doing something. But A, was Google going to make this as draconian as possible in the attempts to... Uh, I guess in the attempts to sit back and say, hey, we're going to see what we can get away with on making it harder? Or was this a means to verify everybody so that they could effectively block anybody trying to do an app that sidestepped advertising, for example? Most people think that, yeah, behind the lines, that's kind of what this is about. I don't know what uh, you think about it. I think it's a positive as long as they are allowing a way for people to install whatever they want on their certified Google devices. And again, I don't think it should be super duper easy, but do not a Google do not think that requiring an identity is going to stop the scammers from making scammy apps, but B don't assume you can put together a system so good. A scammer can't convince a naive person to bypass it. We have to maintain freedom in our computing. I bought this device. I want to do with this device what I want. I want you to keep your dirty, scummy, proprietary paws off of it. That is my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts about all this in the comments down below.